have given you all authority to take out the enemy. You are to conquer and subdue him. Satan has no reign and no rule and no authority within people's lives. God, you search my heart and thoughts. Make sure that I am lined up in your word, Lord. Nothing can come in and hinder what God wants to do. We're right. We're armed. We're dangerous. We're ready to go in. We have keys to bring massive amounts of people into the kingdom of God. Hi, I'm Angela Greenick. I want to welcome you to the War Room. I am at Ground Zero in Henderson, Kentucky with Apostles Shane and Jeannie Amar. I, I just got in, I, was it yesterday? Yes. Yesterday or something. It was a whirlwind last night, but I'm telling you, there is such a hunger for God in this area. I think that sometimes, you know, as ministers and people and pastors that we think, well, what's going on, God? But whenever there's a drought, that's when there's an overflow that hits. Come on. And so today I said to them, I said, please give me the teaching that I just did because I'm still out of breath from three hours of brrrr. But there's something about being here. Amen. First of all, I'm so honored. Um, as you all know, Jeannie and Shane are our first deliverance healing center. I talk about you guys all the time. Your worship is out of this world. But there was something that happened last night that just makes me want to cry. Um, I was watching people come to the altar, and they, were, they weren't just up there just praying. The one girl, she was crying. I had a guy over there, he started weeping. Amen. And I said, Lord, I haven't seen anybody weeping at, and at the altar since I was here a year ago, and all I do is travel. So there's something about that. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird saying it, because it's like, but you, there's something about, listen, if you're in Henderson, Kentucky, or nearby, come out on the Sunday service and stuff, as soon as you walk in the door, you feel that gate. You know, it's really the eye of the needle. The camel goes through, takes all the junk off, and comes in. It's so easy here. All I have to do is preach. I mean, it's so easy because everything is set in the atmosphere. So talk to us. Uh, Pastor, tell us what's going on here. Well, uh, God's moving. He's doing great things. Uh, we're excited. Uh, one of the things that you know, the angel was talking about is that we have, uh, we, we, we teach on and we really encourage people uh, you know, to press in, to have freedom, to be able to, uh, you know, to come down to the altars. Um, what's weird that, I, you know, that's strange, I think, for a lot of people when they come in is that a lot of times our altars are full during the worship service. You know, yeah, they, they yeah, come they down there, everybody yeah. comes up front and they, they worship. And, you know, what I've taught, we have, we came from a background that's, you know, that teaches that, you know, you should have an altar you know, build an altar in your yeah, life. And, sure. And, you know, and we we encourage people, you know, to come That's down to the powerful, altar. That's what you, you know, just said. And tell them what that is. You know? Have an altar so, in their life. Right. Yes. Not just at church, but in your life. Oh, sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, but yeah. it, it, there's, and Judy, every time you get up, there's like a ricochet of spirit hits. Because mm -hmm. you, you, when you're playing guitar, you shoot out electric bolts. And when you get up and everything starts to vibrate, psh, in the spirit, but these guys are hardcore for their city, they, their yeah. passion. And I want to say this, there's a lot of churches right now. I know you guys are going through what you feel is a drought. And a lot of pastors that I know personally, they started out this year, things were moving really good. And then all of a sudden, people started falling away, falling away, falling away. And um, they've been in that struggle of pressing forward and not giving up. That's right. And Jeannie, you said something this morning. When God called you here, you could have went here or to Johannesburg. Is that correct? Yes. And what made you come here? Well, it was the leading of the of the Lord. Yeah. It was the Lord that gave us the, you know, that we had two options. It was Johannesburg, South Africa, or yep. Henderson, Kentucky. And um, but I knew that um, we knew by the Spirit of the Lord and how everything unfolded. Yeah. But that's the key. We listened for the voice of the Lord. I believe the Lord was testing us. To see if we would say yes to Johannesburg, South Africa. And we did. And then the door was open where we came here to Henderson. And everything just, you know, just fell into place. And um, we came over here, started that church with eight people. Four being our family. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And so. Uh, they helped make it feel awesome. Amen. 
And um, you just go where God calls you to go. And, and we've been here for, I don't know, 16 years this October. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Though? Amen. And look what God's done. I mean, you've had, you've had overflow, and then sometimes it seems like it dwindles. But what I'm seeing everywhere in many of the churches and regions um, that I travel, because I'm all the time somewhere, every week it seems, or every few days, and the one thing I'm seeing is the same rhythm. Like there's like an exodus going out. But I've been praying, and in January, one wanted to share the Father was real clear to me. He said, you know, I, I took my people out of Egypt, but Egypt has not come out of my people yet. Right. And the Lord said, I'm going to start, I'm going to start grabbing them and pulling them, because the Lord wants to do something so powerful in our life. And I think it's, to, I really believe it has to do with an invasion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And there is revival everywhere you go, but God wants to pour out His Spirit for this next generation. Amen. And you have a fabulous, incredible, you're, all your children are anointed, they're, they're spouses, I mean. Amen. Casey, last night, their son's on the drums, today's on the guitar, and I go, yeah, I forgot he does guitar, too. Yeah. And I'm yelling for him earlier, he's back in the sound booth, and I thought, that's what we want. Amen. And so right now, we got about 30 or 40 of them out on the streets, because there's a big bluegrass yeah. going on, and they're going out to minister and preach and pray, and... And your grandson last night went across the street to go bring somebody into the church for a service to get healed. Amen. 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 And, and what, how old is he? He just turned 11. Jesus. <laughs> or he's going to be 11 in October. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. But I was like, y'all you must have done something. Yeah. Prayer. Pray. Okay. Pray. Read the word. Obey God. Pray. Read the word. Amen. Amen. And obey God. Come on. Yes. It's not complicated. It's not complicated. I thought, you know, just what I love about being here, because my Larry, y'all know him because you've seen him on TV and stuff. He goes, oh, poor Shane. He says he's got to drive with two Miss Crazies because Jeannie's like I am. It's like, shake it, move it, get out of the way because the job is going to get done. Amen. Because God is looking for a people with their ear to the ground. Amen. And now you just finished a, 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 a series on the book of Revelation about the, about the horsemen. But I put out a prophetic word recently about the horse. This is a horse state, Kentucky, and your state is what is it? Unbridled, unbridled, unbridled spirit. spirit. Unbridled, Un spirit. unbridled spirit. When I said that last day, some of the people looked at me kind of odd, and I go, I don't even think you just got that, and you live here, right? You know what I'm saying? Amen. And so I saw flying in. I saw black and red horses coming, and I'm at the River of Life which I love the name because there's life in the river. I learned that from Jeannie. Amen. No, really. Yeah. And so, but I was praying and I saw the dark riders coming. And the father said, pay attention at the city gate. And all of a sudden, choo, the river started coming up to my knees. And then all of a sudden, stallions came up out of the water poof, and annihilated the dark riders. Choo, they were gone. And I was just in Madisonville with Barbie Rush at the healing room. And I was telling Barbie, I go, Barbie, this is what I saw. And I'm telling her while we're driving in, and as soon as we hit the Henderson line, it started to rain. Mm -hmm. And people know that's my sign. Amen. Because the drought is getting rained on, because it's time to start getting that harvest in Amen. Amen. So she shows me some movie, and I was like, but there's no Red Riders. But if there were, it would have been what, pretty much what I saw. It was so cool. And I thought, Lord, we got to start believing God for the impossible. That's it. But you were talking last night about you just did some part of a series right. out of with Revelation. Can you share some of that? Because yep. he's one of the best teachers. I kid you <laughs> not, my God. Amen. Right, Amen. Amen. So, actually, tomorrow, Sunday, we'll be, uh, we'll be wrapping up that series. But we've been on that for eight weeks. And we went through the book of Revelation uh, and the book of Daniel. And so it just so happened this past Sunday, which I thought was awesome because you made mention about, you know, the horse. And yeah. Believe it or not, I didn't know that that I knew that the state of Kentucky, you know, had a horse. I didn't know that that's what it meant. I didn't know about unbridled spirit. I learned that last night. Oh did, my God. I said, did you know that? Yeah. Did you? Well, I've been here all my life. That's and so, so, so awesome. when she said I'm that, I was like, man, that just that really hit because yeah. we just wrapped up, you know, Sunday about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Wow. And. The direction that I'm going with that is about us being an end time church because yeah. I believe that we're we are an end time church. We're yes. living in the you know the last days. Jesus is coming back soon. And the point was is 
what do we need to do as a church to be able to run with the horses? Yes. You know, and so we talked about you know the things that we need to do as individuals. We need to run with cover. We have to have people in our lives. We have to have one another. You know, we need people it's that powerful. we need. It's good to have oversight and accountability. You know, because without that, you know, we'd be a out there doing our own thing. It, and so it's, it's good so to have true. that. Yeah. When you yeah. were saying stuff last night, I said, Jane, I'm going to use your material, and I will let people know that I heard it from you. But I went back, and I was talking to Larry, and I'm like, the first, because the first thing you said it had to do with covering. And the Holy Spirit's all over me. I'm still stuck on that. I know there's seven more, but I got stuck. Because a lot of times, we just dismiss having a covering. We dismiss discipleship. Yeah. Recently, I talked on discipleship, and people had that really weird account, what I call the weird account, look in their eyes. They're like, what? I'm like, you know, being discipled, getting trained, going to Bible study, praying, doing Wednesday night service or whatever they have besides Sunday. Yeah. Really pressing in. And I don't, what's going on? You know, it's like sometimes nobody wants that covering. I don't know if they, everybody's arrived and I just didn't get that memo or something, you know. Right. I have a covering. My, my covering was with me two nights ago. Um, Apostle David Kelly and his wife from Paducah, Kentucky, because people go, she's such a wildfire. Well, I have pastors and I have apostles and prophets. These guys are also on my board. I'm not foolish. You have to have a covering. Amen. Because just because I see don't mean that maybe I can't see something coming down the road where you can. Amen. And that's why we're all, we keep in touch because we're held accountable because Amen. we cover each other. Amen. Absolutely. That's right. So what else? So we have the covering, which I'm still stuck on. I think I'm probably going to be stuck on that for about a year. What else is there? Passion. Amen. And what would that passion mean for people? Passion being to me, yeah, it, it's keeping your excitement, you know, for the things of God and being enthusiastic. I mean, the, everything about the kingdom of God is good. Yes. And so, you know, the spirit of religion that you know that we have to deal with in our area. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people that they complain. Yeah. Uh, they're unhappy. You know, they're still walking uh, bound. And, you know, if we stir up our passion, you know, about the things, sometimes, you know, we lose that. After yes. a while, it's like, well, things didn't go the way I expected it. I've prayed for this. I've got a word, you know, I've got this and that. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start just kind of, your battery starts running down, yeah. and you know people lose their passion. And so we got to get that. We got to keep that stirred up. Be excited about the things of God. It Listen, is. I heard I heard a, a preacher say this one time when we were at a, an evangelism training school in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. He said enthusiasm is contagious. Yes, it is. You know? So if we're excited, mm -hmm. you know, hey, we got fun at church. Uh, but you know what? <laughs> I say this all the time. But when I come here, like I don't have to do. Uh, it's so hard sometimes, like sometimes I think people forget, yeah, you have to take care of your, I take care of my husband, my home, I pack, I have to do all these things, and I have to get on a plane to come, and sometimes it's nine, you know, 13 hours ahead, or thank God it's only two hours ahead here, but the point is, and then I got to go into the church, and I have to deal, sadly, with warfare, which I, I'm, that's my job, and the intercession, that's also my job, but sometimes it's hard when, you know, there's like, you have to fight for the anointing. Like sometimes you have to fight because you have it, but sometimes you have to fight because there's somebody there that's cursing you or trying to shut it down. That's a different situation, right? Sure. But you guys are all the time fighting. Like Jeannie, when you start to get into that zone of yours, like I just prayed today, I said, God, you gotta keep her on the other side. Because every time you got near me, I started crying. And I was like, God, what is it about her that makes, you're like my bestie to the bestie. And so they have my first deliverance healing center, and it took me years and years to find just one person. I said, God, if you could just give me the DNA of your heart, then I could start releasing them, and then I get hope for other deliverances. And then we start our 16th one in, next week in uh, Gutenberg, Sweden. I was like, who knew? I just thought maybe I'd have one or two. Amen. And then God gave me more. Amen. And, but, but if I had not met both of you, it, it would have, I don't think it would have happened, to be honest. Because you know what? Nobody could take your place. Amen. You know? And you have such a passion for God's people. that, And so you start worshiping. You just go off into your own zone. I'm like, keep her over there, God. Because I ain't got waterproof mascara. I want to talk a little about last night. We had such a, oh, God. 
It was easy just doing my job. I was like, Jesus, I love it here so much. Mm -hmm. I promised Larry I gotta bring him next time because he's like, I gotta go. So I, I've gotten him to Holland and Sweden this year, so he has more vacation next year. Because you know I'll be back next year. Because you know what, well, we gotta keep building in the city. And Amen. we're building an army here like you have no idea. And I was, um, I never take the anointing for granted. Right. But you had your yoga instructor here. Can you share a little bit about her? Um, oh, and, um, her name is Erin McKay. Yes. And um, in Ingest, um, what she has done is, is it's her studio. She has a Studio 3. It's called Studio 3, but it's also called Yoga Alternative. Yes. And what she has done, as you and I did, yes. you know, Jesus Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. Yes. We do the same thing in different in different manners. Yes, of course. And, um, She's war. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. And what she is doing is what she has taken, um, she has taken yoga and a mindset, as a, and, and they look at it as a religion, and she has reversed it. And, um, and you know, she, we pray, um, we have Bible study, um, you know, we work out together. But what she's taken, what the enemy has taken, yes. a wonderful thing. It is the will of the Lord that we are fit in our bodies. And we're, and we're healthy. And that we are healthy. Not starving to death to and, and, get thin or something and say, oh, I'm healthy. No, you're not. It, absolutely. That we are well in our body, in our mind, spirit, and soul. And, and, um, and so anyway, so she's taken this beautiful, um, you know, taking exercise and yoga, and she does it for the glory of the Lord. Yes. And um, just last week, she had asked me, which is, it's just, it was just God, how, yeah, yeah. Um, but we are going to be working on um, a four series in yoga on the armor of God. Come on. And so, and so anyway, so I mean, we're, we're, we're excited about that and you know, what, what the Lord's going to do and he'll, oh. and you know, she said, well, I don't really know what we're going to do. And I was like, you know what? I don't either, but Jesus does. Yes. And we'll just, we'll just follow him and do what he says. Well, she has a channel now, as of last night, I gave her. TV channel, I said, I'm going to give you this, and I gave her and her husband a word. We had such an incredible time, yeah. and it was so awesome, though, because even when I gave him the word, I had to walk away, and I just had to have that aha moment of, oh, God, thank you for this gift. Amen. You know, and it said, just give me a second and one more, and I was like, Jesus, I just wanted to cry, yeah. because the Lord said, sometimes you meet people, and you know, there, I want to say this, not about them, but there are other people that are out there, and sometimes people come from a Catholic or a Baptist or Presbyterian, whatever the background is, and they start to, they see stuff and they go, that can't be God. But when you're in the presence, it's tangible. Amen. And tangible. when the tangible becomes the reality, the impossible becomes possible. Amen. And so I'm so excited because y'all know I'm going to be 60 August 17th, the next Friday. Amen. And I had planned on starting my DVD. This is the third year I've been trying to make a DVD work at, but every time something happens and I get hurt or whatever happens, because you know, God, whatever, but I fell and got hurt in, in the store. But anyway, I said, Lord, God darn it, I wanted to get some things moving because I want people to start getting healthy. Yes. Because we're feeding our, it's like a toxic appetite because we're so sad yes. that we're all the time trying to fill the voids. That's right. And, you know, and I, I do the warrior pose all the time. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. And people go, how can you at your age kick as high as you do, do splits and everything else? And, and I said, because since I've been 11 years old, I started working out because you've got to be healthy. That's it. Especially, not just because I travel, but I want to be healthy. Amen. I just had a lady say to me, what is your secret? And I wasn't sure what she was asking me. I said, well, I don't really have a secret. I just go and do God. She goes, no, because of the way you look. And I said, well, I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I really believe. Um, I just was in Holland a couple months ago. You know what they said? Have you had a facelift? I said, no, I don't do any of that stuff. They go, this is really weird. But you, you look younger every time we see you. And I said, you know what? The more and I go with him. Amen. And the more I let, because you know, it's stressful.